please subscribe my channel. A True Love Story Many years in the past, a young man named Ron Gunti departed from his Naples home to pursue studies in northern Italy. He secured a modest room on the highest floor of a venerable and dim palace that had once belonged to a noble family. Presently, the proprietor, an elderly woman named Sonora Lisabetta, leased rooms to students attending the University of Padua. Roan's room featured a small window affording him a view of a vast garden adorned with numerous plants and flowers. Curious, he inquired of Sonora Elisabetta one day, does the garden belong to you? Oh no, she promptly replied. That garden belongs to the renowned Dr. Giacomo Ricchini. People claim he utilizes those plants to concoct peculiar medicines. He resides in that modest brown house within the garden with his daughter Beatrice. Giovanni frequently positioned himself by his window to gaze at the garden, a spectacle teeming with an array of flora he had never witnessed before. These plants with their colossal green leaves and resplendent flowers spanning the entire spectrum of colors captivated him. Giovanni's favorite plant rested in a white marble vase near the house, adorned with sizable purple flowers. One day, as Giovanni observed the garden from his window, he spotted an elderly man donned in a black cape strolling among the plants. The man was tall and slender, with an unhealthy yellow complexion and cold, black eyes. He wore thick gloves and a mask over his mouth and nose treading cautiously among the plants as if navigating through wild animals or poisonous serpents. Though he scrutinized the flowers closely, he refrained from touching or smelling any of them. Upon reaching the plant with the large purple flowers, the old man halted, removing his mask. He called out, Beatrice, come help me. I am coming, father. What do you want? responded a warm, youthful voice from inside the house. A young woman emerged into the garden, her luscious dark hair cascading in curls around her shoulders. Rosy cheeks, large black eyes, and an aura of vitality characterized her. As she moved among the plants, Giovanni couldn't help but think she was as beautiful as the purple flowers in the marble vase. The old man communicated something to her. She nodded and proceeded to touch and smell the flowers that her father had cautiously avoided. Several weeks later, Giovanni paid a visit to Pietro Belloni, a friend of his father's, and a professor of medicine at the university. During the visit, Giovanni inquired about Dr. Ricchini. He is a brilliant scientist, Professor Belloni responded, but also a perilous man. Why? queried Giovanni. The older man shook his head thoughtfully. Because Ricchini prioritizes science over people, he has concocted numerous deadly poisons from the plants in his garden, believing he can cure ailments with them. While he has seemingly cured individuals deemed terminally ill, Ricchini's medicines have also claimed many lives. I believe he would sacrifice any life, even his own, for one of his experiments. But what about his daughter, Giovanni? inquired Giovanni. I'm certain he loves her, the old professor smiled at the young man. So you've heard about Beatrice Ricchini. People say she is incredibly beautiful, but few in Padua have ever seen her. She never leaves her father's garden. Giovanni left Professor Bologna's house as the sun descended. En route home, he stopped at a flower shop, acquiring fresh blooms. Returning to his room, he sat by the window. With little sunlight remaining, the garden fell silent. The purple flowers on Giovanni's favorite plant seemed to radiate in the fading evening light. Then emerged a figure from the entrance of the petite brown house, Beatrice. She stepped into the garden, strolling amidst the plants. Whether she touched the leaves or inhaled the fragrance of a flower, Ricchini's daughter appeared to enhance her beauty with each step. 
Upon reaching the purple plant, she buried her face in its blossoms. Giovanni overheard her murmuring, Grant me your breath, my sister. The ordinary air weakens me, and bestow upon me one of your exquisite flowers. With a delicate touch, Beatrice plucked one of the largest flowers. As she raised it to adorn her dark hair, a few drops of liquid from the flower descended to the ground. One of these drops landed on the head of a tiny lizard crawling near Beatrice's feet. For a brief moment, the small creature writhed violently before ceasing all movement. Beatrice displayed no surprise, sighing and placing the flower in her hair. Giovanni leaned out of the window for a clearer view. In that moment, a captivating butterfly fluttered over the garden wall. It seemed drawn to Beatrice, circling her head once before its vibrant wings stilled, and it plummeted to the ground lifeless. Beatrice shook her head with sorrow. Suddenly, she gazed up at Giovanni's window, noticing the young man observing her. Giovanni picked up the flowers he had purchased and tossed them down to her. Fair lady, he declared, where? These flowers as a gift from Giovanni Gunti. Thank you, responded Beatrice. She retrieved the flowers from the ground and swiftly ran back to the house. Pausing at the door, she waved shyly at Giovanni. He thought he saw his flowers starting to wither in her hands. For several days, Giovanni refrained from the window overlooking Rikini's garden. He regretted conversing with Beatrice, feeling ensnared by her beauty. A trace of fear lingered as he couldn't forget the demise of the lizard and butterfly. One day, returning from classes, Giovanni encountered Professor Bologna on the street. Well, Giovanni, the old man remarked, have you forgotten me? He scrutinized the young man closely. What ails you, my friend? You look different since our last meeting. It was true. Giovanni had become markedly gaunt. His complexion was pallid, and his eyes glowed with a hint of fever. While conversing, a man clad in a long black cape ambled down the street. His pace was slow, suggestive of a person in poor health. His face bore yellow hue, yet his eyes remained sharp and black, the same man Giovanni had seen in the garden. As he passed them, the old man nodded coldly to Professor Bologna but observed Giovanni with keen interest. It's Dr. Rikini, Professor Bologna whispered after the man had passed. Has he ever laid eyes on you before? Giovanni shook his head. No, he replied. I don't think so. Concern etched the professor's face. I believe he has seen you. I recognize that cold gaze of his. He looks at you the same way when examining an animal he's experimented on. Giovanni, I'd wager my life on it. You are the subject of one of Rikini's experiments. Giovanni stepped back from the old man. You must be joking, he protested. No, I'm serious, the professor said, gripping Giovanni's arm. Be cautious, my young friend. You are in grave danger. Giovanni pulled away. I must be on my way, he stated. Good night. Hurrying to his room, Giovanni grappled with confusion and a tinge of fear. On one occasion, he stumbled upon a clandestine entrance to Rikini's garden. Upon entering, he found the plants to be unruly and unnatural, a product, he concluded, of Rikini's unsettling experiments. Suddenly, Beatrice, Rikini's daughter, appeared in the garden. Swiftly moving among the flowers, she approached Giovanni. Despite his apology for intruding without an invitation, Beatrice greeted him with a smile, making him feel at ease. Noting Giovanni's fondness for flowers, she remarked, I see you love flowers, and so you have come to take a closer look at my father's rare collection. While conversing, Giovanni detected a captivating perfume in the air around her, unsure if it emanated from the flowers or her breath. Beatrice inquired about his home and family. 
sharing that she had spent her life in this garden. Giovanni felt as though he were conversing with a spirited child, her essence sparkling like clear water. As they strolled through the garden, they eventually reached a magnificent plant adorned with large purple flowers. Giovanni realized that the fragrance from these flowers resembled the scent of Beatrice's breath, albeit much stronger. Compelled to pluck one of the purple flowers, Giovanni's attempt was met with a piercing scream from Beatrice, who caught his hand and forcefully pulled it away. Don't ever touch those flowers, she cried. They will take your life. With that, she ran into the house, leaving Giovanni to face Dr. Rakini standing in the garden. That night, Giovanni couldn't shake the thoughts of Beatrice's sweetness and beauty. Despite the pain in his hand, he fell asleep. When morning arrived, he woke up in intense pain, feeling as if his hand was on fire, the same hand Beatrice had gripped when he reached for the purple flower. Inspecting his hand, Giovanni noticed a purple mark resembling four small fingers and a tiny thumb. However, consumed by thoughts of Beatrice, he momentarily forgot the pain and continued to meet her in the garden daily. Finally, Beatrice confessed her love, but insisted on maintaining distance, refusing even a kiss or hand-holding. Several weeks later, Professor Bologna visited Giovanni. I was worried about you, the older man expressed. You haven't attended your classes at the university for over a month. Is something wrong? Unpleased by the visit, Giovanni denied any issues. However, Professor Bologna persisted, sharing a disconcerting revelation. You must stay away from Rakini and his daughter. Her father has poisoned her since infancy. The poison is in her blood and on her breath. If Rakini did this to his own daughter, what does he plan to do to you? Distraught, Giovanni covered his face. Oh my God, he cried. Don't worry, reassured the old man. It's not too late to save you, and we may succeed in helping Beatrice too. Do you see this little silver bottle? It holds a medicine that will destroy even the most powerful poison. Give it to Beatrice to drink. Leaving the bottle on the table, Professor Bologna exited Giovanni's room. Giovanni, torn between his belief in Beatrice's innocence and the professor's warning, prepared for their daily meeting. As he combed his hair, Giovanni caught a glimpse of himself in the mirror. Despite his handsome appearance, doubt crept in. At least her poison has not gotten into my body yet, he reassured himself. Looking at freshly bought flowers, horror struck him, they were turning brown. Giovanni's face paled as he stared at himself in the mirror. A nearby spider caught his attention, and as he blew a breath of air at it, the spider trembled and fell dead. I am cursed, Giovanni whispered, realizing that his own breath seemed to carry poison. In that moment, a rich, sweet voice floated up from the garden. Roan, you are late. Come down. You are a monster, Roan shouted as soon as he reached her. With your poison, you have turned me into a monster too. I am a prisoner of this garden. Roan, Beatrice cried, looking at him with her large, bright eyes. Why are you saying these terrible things? While it's true that I can never leave this garden, you are free to go wherever you wish. Roan glared at her with hatred in his eyes. Don't pretend you don't know what you've done to me. 
A group of insects flew into the garden, approaching Ron. And circling his head, he blew his breath at them, and the insects fell to the ground dead. Beatrice screamed. I see it, I see it. My father's science has done this to us. Believe me, Roan, I did not ask him to do this to you. I only wanted to love you. Roan's anger transformed into sadness. Then he remembered the medicine Professor Bologna had given him. Perhaps the medicine could eradicate the poison in their bodies and restore them to normalcy. Dear Beatrice, he said, our fate is not so terrible. He revealed the small silver bottle and explained the potential effects of the medicine inside. I will drink first, she said. You must wait to see what happens to me before you drink it. She put the medicine to her lips and took a small sip. Simultaneously, Rikini emerged from his house and approached the two young people slowly, extending his hands as if giving them a blessing. Blessing, my daughter, he said. You are no longer alone in the world. Give Ron one of the purple flowers from your favorite plant. It will not harm him. Now, my science and your love have made him different from ordinary men. My father, Beatrice said weakly, why did you do this terrible thing to your own child? Rikini appeared surprised. What do you mean, my daughter? He asked. You possess a power no other woman has. With just a breath, you can defeat your strongest enemy. Would you prefer to be a weak woman? I want to be loved, not feared, Beatrice replied. But now it doesn't matter. I'm leaving you, father. I'm going where the poison you have given me will do no harm. Goodbye to you, Roan. Beatrice collapsed to the ground, dying at the feet of her father and Roan. The poison had become too ingrained in the young woman. The medicine, intended to neutralize the poison, ended up claiming her life as well.